Okay. All right, um, so I'm going to start off today by taking a look at this piece here. Um, it has some minor issues with the with the presence of this leg here in the distance, um, which looks a little bit large considering it's on the far side of the body. So if we were to ever rotate her body forward, um, I know in caricature and cartooning what we do is we you know exaggerate features, but at this point it really feels like we have um, an like a a scale problem. It's not just the silhouette of a female. So this thigh here looks a little bit large. So I'm going to try to pose this on Portrait Studio so that we can see whether or not this is accurate. Feels like the hip is fully displaced. Um, also the far far shoulder looks a little bit off for me and the thickness of the neck also looks a little bit off. Um, then you have a really boring background. Either grayscale it or just leave it alone or if you want to give it an environment, don't do this gradient background. The gradient background is really cheesy and we don't do this anymore. It looks like, you know, Photoshop 2 um, <laughs> or whatever it's called back then when Photoshop was just born. It's like the basic effects people did with their little gradient and they had their character in the foreground. It just looks really, really old style presentation. Also, again, if the character design is just about the character and you don't have any ideas for a background, don't try to force it in um, by giving yourself a gradient background like this because you're just going to ruin the painting. You're going to take the direction away. It's also not a good idea to put a highlight on the top left corner of your painting because you're throwing off the focal point. So if the top left is cool and high, um, you're attracting a lot of attention, so cool and light, but the lower corner here is nice and dark, framed very well. So even if the light source was coming from top down, which is why you did the gradient, it would need to be a fully completed environment. And it doesn't really look like any kind of cast shadow is pointing us towards a top down or top right or top left. I mean, yeah, this arm is dark, but it could have been a little bit higher instead of directly top left. Um, then this one has a lot of color issues. Again, another example of students for some weird reason bringing in color into the background. The color wash isn't necessary if you're focused on skin tone. This skin tone is really oversaturated. It's shifted over into the hues a little bit. So I've seen people with this kind of red in their face, but only after, like if they have an allergic reaction or something, um, or if they've just ran a mile. Uh, that purple, that blue, um, that flushed face. Also, they're not that dark. They're not that pale. We usually get pure pinks like this on skin tones that are super, super pale because the blood comes right through. And then we have this piece here, <clears throat> which is of an environment, which is a background color. So I guess the theme of today is backgrounds. Um, so it is a, an actual background, but what you did was there's way too much exposure considering it's a snowstorm or rainstorm. I can't tell if it's snow or rain or both. Uh, but it means that it's overcast. Overcast colors are very grayed out. There isn't enough sunshine to show all the reds in her lips and her cheeks and all of that. So I'm going to take a look at that. But before all of this, I'm going to go ahead and pose our model here. And so what we do is we just click the joint. The new update that's coming up is going to have it so that all the joints are indicated so you don't have to feel so uh, lost trying to find where the joints are. If you press E, that's how you can rotate. So her head is very, very, um, see that how you can't find it? Her head is very uh, high. Okay, so I'm just posing. And I think she's also shifted her arm like this way. And this whole arm right here is also shifted up. The other arm is also doing something a little bit more wide. So we open the arm and then we lift the arm up. And then we open the lower forearm and then we lift that up. So she seems like she has an asymmetrical, I think for some reason this arm feels super long. Was it something I did? <clears throat> you can actually change scales and stuff like that. You can scale them if the arm, if you had a character with massive arms, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to, for some reason, I just feel like this should be shrunken. And then we have this leg here, which is shifted inward. Oops. 
Gotta rotate sometimes to get the fit angle. Okay, shift it inward, shift it back, kind of straightened, just kind of bent. Just like, like she's floating, like zero gravity or like some sort of X-Men flight pose. I call it like the X-Men float. Whenever characters like floated, they always had this effect here. And then we rotate so that the chest is the exact same position as this. So the chest is really what we're doing. And then we've got the head facing forward and tilted up. Okay. So the chest is nearly hiding the arm behind. I'm going to change the lighting so that it's a little bit more, I'm still not used to this, a little bit more forward like that. There we go. <clears throat> so as, as I suspected, really, this model here is exaggerated enough waist-wise. She's got a great waist. Also, it's a very universal body type. It's not too effeminate and um, curvy, let's say, um, and it's not like a Disney curvy, and it's not a <clears throat> uh, too masculine or too athletic, so it's definitely in between. So if the chest is rotated this way, see how displaced this thigh is? It's too much visibility on the thigh. And then take a look at the width of the shoulder compared to this shoulder here. It's way too, even though she has a great body, and also, you gave us a massive bicep over here. That means her body's pretty built. Her weight has distributed across her face. I mean, across her body a little bit. I'm actually going to um, rotate this back forward. And then rotate again. I'm trying to find where the belly button is compared to. So I think this leg here would be a little bit more forward. A little bit more this way. And then, yeah, so this, and now actually this knee is really hidden, so it's actually back to where it was, which is control Z. <clears throat> so yeah, this leg is much more hidden than I, than was described originally, and then this one is actually much more of a knee bent. See that knee bent? And then back. There we go. So now we've got that X-Men on a super powerful pose and the head size. So you've got a head size problem <clears throat> and you've got a torso size problem. And if you ever felt like, you know, making it even more of a masculine woman, you can just uh, increase the size of the upper body just a little bit more. So it's still feminine, but you can increase it. So what you did was the exact opposite. You shrunk it too much. So it looked a little bit more like that, which is a, it, it, it's possible. People do come in bodies like this, but this makes the butt almost as wide as her shoulders, which trust me, you can notice. And then not only that, you shrunk the head. So you have something that looks a little bit like this, which is way too much of a stretch of your, uh, I guess, creative powers. And you're expecting way too much of the audience to find a normalcy with these kinds of scales. So this is more what you need to do. Remember that the upper body, in general, the total scale is larger, and the head needs to be big enough. And I think you kind of felt like the head was too big because you had the ears. Never draw like accessory features, which are like ears um, or wings before you draw the main body. Write that back to me. So never draw accessory features or um, <clears throat> like which, what would you call them, fantasy features? Uh, before you draw the main body, you have to draw the main body first, and then you and then you can add everything else. Because if those ears were drawn in the original sketch or the first time you drew the head, they will make you they will fill in the space the size of the head was supposed to fill in if it was enlarged any bigger. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. This is the wrong angle. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. So I hope after our previous update, people start, stopped having issues with their um, uh, graphics cards, not being able to run Porch Studio. But again, we we're still going to come out with more uh, pro performance profiles. Basically, what's going to be is Porch Studio is going to load in in the most like basic Stone Age um, settings. 
So we're talking like anti-aliasing is gone and shading and bounce light is gone. Shadow um, quality is gone. Um, it's mostly really, really bad uh, uh, resolution. So that's going to be like for those who are having trouble. But we're going to have preset profiles. So there's going to be ultra. If you have a great uh, graphics card and you can run it and you choose ultra, Porsche Studio will run as ultra the next time you run it. Okay. But this is just a safety feature that we've developed so that people stop having trouble being able to load it up. A lot of people are trying to run it on Cintiq Companions, which are basically potatoes with a toothbrush stabbed on it in it and um, really, really old graphics tablets from computers that are 10 years old. Uh, you can tell how old your computer is depending on the kind of input you're using for your mouse and keyboard or the power um, cord that you're using. If it's like a circular power cord or one of those circular um, non-USB mouse and keyboard, your computer is way too old. And those are the kinds of computers we're seeing. Um, if your graphics card can't run simple online uh, games like mini clip games or something like that, your computer's too old. Uh, so before you spend money on something like Porch Studio, save your money. Don't get the next phone or anything like that. Just save it. Christmas is coming up for those who are privileged enough to ask their parents for a computer instead of some ridiculous pair of socks. Um, then uh, you can you know, you know, spend your money on that. Tell them I don't want anything for Christmas. Just help me save up for my computer. For those who are having you know, extremely bad, um, uh, or they just have no resources at all for a new computer. Uh, I hope, I hope, and who have pop, bought Porsche Studio, thank you so much for the support, but I hope that the new performance profiles will be able to help you run it. If you still are having issues after this coming update, um, we'll save your copy for you, and then we will give it to you once you do have a decent computer uh, to run it in. Um, so, let's move on to Photoshop and then apply all these changes. <clears throat> so where's my pen? And by the way, a video is coming up where I'm going to review uh, an extended review of the Huion GT220. And in that same review, I'm going to talk about um, my latest favorite tool ever, which is the Galaxy Note 8. Uh, I'm not I'm not representing or this is not sponsored by Samsung. Samsung could care less who I am. But I love the pen. I love everything about it. It's made drafting so easy. So if I have like an idea for a painting, I'm just sitting on my couch. I cannot be asked to, to, to just get up and go on my computer and uninstall my driver and reinstall the one for for uh, for the GT220 because the bad thing about Huion is that they don't run dual drivers at the same time, which I think has always been the issue with Wacom. They tried to do that and because they forced it, that's how we have driver issues. There's, they should be like Huion not letting you run one, both devices at the same time using the driver. There's only one Win tab and many tablets fighting for it. But um, yeah, I will uh, be doing a review on the Note 8 and hopefully you guys will be able to get a good idea what kind of phone to get. I think every device we buy should be a reflection of our, of our, you know, of our, of our occupation. So if you are um, you know, just into art and stuff. You should have a phone that's prepared to give you that service. And Abu, you know, deals with a lot of programming. He's running a lot of stuff. He's designing the Android. And so what he did was he bought a, 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 a the OnePlus 5. And it has an, an unusual, like, crazy amount of, gig, like, a RAM. I don't know what it's called. 3 gigabytes of, or 5 gigabytes of RAM, or 8 gigabytes of RAM. I think it has 8 gigabytes. <clears throat> which is what he needs for his skill um, and his craft so he could develop the Android version for Portrait Studio and make sure that he can reference that um, against other other uh, uh, games that can that he can run with it and stuff like that so because if it can run like crazy games and and stuff like that it'll be able to run Portrait Studio just fine also I'm just adjusting this now sorry my voice is gone <clears throat> All right, and then I'm gonna tuck in this thigh right here. So yeah, I really recommend the OnePlus if you're not really an artist, but you have lots of um, you know tasks to do or stuff like that. It's an amazing underrated phone. But if you want like a phone that is up to date with your needs as an artist, the Note 8 is just wonderful. They've got like three drawing apps. They've got a coloring app for <laughs> when you just feel like coloring something, which is so cute and adorable. They've got all these little Called, what is it called? I forgot what the app is called. I'm going to show you my favorite brushes on the um, sketchbook, Autodesk sketchbook, which is what I use on the Note 8. 
<clears throat> the legs are very, very long. So I'm just basing this off of what I remember, and then now I'm just going to open this up and just zoom in. <clears throat> okay, um, so I'm... Ooh, I guess I have to... I can't, I don't want to leave. Uh, actually, I'll just leave it. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. It's gone completely. And I can explain why, but I, I'm afraid I might start ranting again. I don't want to <laughs> open those doors. Um, so the head seems appropriate now, but it's because of the ears that we can't really tell. But the head feels like a great size. Remember, the outline of the ears is not part of the head. The head is just like right here, our way under the hood. And then we've got the swell of the breasts, which should typically be at or higher than the arms. This angle, I think, is a little bit wrong that I took. So this would be even more hiding for the thigh. And then we would have this thigh, as you can see, in front of the thigh in the back. It's details like this that takes you from one level of drawing to another. <clears throat> but uh, I will mention what I was discussing just in passing. If, if the net neutrality is threatened, and this is for YouTubers who are listening who weren't here in the live um, and, uh, and didn't hear my rant, if it's, if it's threatened, I will be going offline for a very long time um, until I figure out relocation. Uh, so I will be probably moving to Canada um, in the very, very near future, probably as soon as, as Christmas is done. I'm ditching this, uh, this joke of a country. <clears throat> All right, so I have to select the background. I don't know how, um, but I don't know if I can. But if you benefit from my channel, if you benefit from everything that I've provided for you personally in your life, I get so many messages about how I've helped those who, you know, don't know how to draw, kind of figure their way around the fundamentals. Fundamentals otherwise coveted by online channels that refuse to talk about the real fundamentals and stuff. If, if I have benefited you, you have every reason to call and, and, and protest for net neutrality. It's not just about being able to browse YouTube's um, corrupted trending page. It's about, you know, what, what we provide each other and the content that we give each other. So I've been running this dream of a job of mine for a very long time, all thanks to this channel. And if you benefit from my channel, then that's a reason for you to fight this, this threat to net, net neutrality. I'm sorry, I can't preserve your, uh, your see-through little pieces here. So what I'm going to do is just darken it, just have one value. Look at how much more dignified that looks as compared to where you had it before. So you had all these ugh, annoying little values and stuff like that. <clears throat> Oopsie. You had all these annoying little... Um, uh, sorry, uh, gradients everywhere. It was really throwing off the piece. And now look at how much more dignified that looks. And if you have a glow behind her, hopefully I can still catch my... Uh... <clears throat> Oopsie, what am I doing? Nine, I'm going down, not up. And trust me, making calls works. Making calls happens. I, I, I don't think I'm even considered because you have to register and petition, and I've done... But I don't think my vote is considered, and you're, you're all voting in people who are still going to vote for the severance of, of net neutrality. So it, you have to be able to use your citizenship appropriately and effectively, um, that you have a voice whether they like it or not. And if you're not using it, you have no reason to complain if, if it goes belly up. <clears throat> um, so what I'm trying to do here is select separate the background from the character, which is what I should have done earlier. But I'm trying to show you where you can bring in environment changes or little environment indicators, but they do not, you do not try to make it as if it's a room. So if you had an environment 
indicator somewhere and you want to make her pop a little bit, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. First and foremost, this is a dark scene for one very good reason. She has glows, but you forgot to make them glow. Okay, so you have that for you. And then you have the fact that they actually glow outwardly. Uh, lighten. And just like this. And then now you have you have two options. You can darken her completely and lighten the background. That's one way to bring in an environment. You can go ahead and do that. Make it like a really, I think this is beautiful. Um, you also have the chance to bring in some cool, cool secondary light source just around here, just on the chest. Just coming off of the character's uh, spell. A little bit on the arm, a little bit on everything nearby really cool little reflectors that reveal the character's form as it drowns in the shadow. You have that going for you. I would leave the legs dark. Um, you also have the fact that her eyes are glowing. So you spent way too much time giving us that stupid little gradient in the background that was doing nothing. It was drawing all the attention away. And you forgot what an environment really is, which is a light environment. An environment is not a background. Before anything, an environment is a light environment. So a background starts with a good light environment. Write that back to me. That's a good fundamental to remember. So it may seem like there's 100 fundamentals, but really it's just like 10, and they've got like 10 each branching out of them. And if you understand one, you'll understand the branching uh, fundamentals out of that. So a light environment has to reflect the object. It also has to be good for staging. And that all comes out of the fact that the light affects the object as much as the background, and that's the main branch of the fundamental, and then the, the, bran uh, the, the main trunk of the fundamental. And then the branch would be the fact that um, your background is the light environment. That's what a background is. It starts with the, how the light affects the character. <clears throat> okay, so we have that. We also have this leftover gradient from when we uh, lassoed, so I'm just going to get rid of that. What would be cool is if you showed us the gesture of her hand, so if she just went up, it would leave behind this really cool trail of magic, just like that. Ugh. Just like this, if she just went up from the ground or something like that. Maybe her eyes also left behind a trail. Um, and that's another way for you to incorporate movement and motion in an open space without really using a stupid little gradient in the background. Gradients are cheesy. Write that back to me. Gradients are super cheesy. They are super queso. You do not want to use those in your, in, your, in your character design. This is a character design. This is you pitching a character design uh, for, a, um, for a scene. There was another option uh, for a character or a game. There was another option of making her darker than her background and making it lighter, but I, now I just forfeited that completely because we have these two <clears throat> um, uh, glowing orbs and her eyes as part of the environment, so we can't really darken the background and minimize these. They're playing a really big role. Um, another thing is, and le letting the color do that is one thing, but you can always just grayscale the background just let it do that. I know it's boring, but it's better than than what you did before. This is still nice and dark. This is still very dignified presentation. You can probably go, this is wrong. This is not going to let the glow come out. Go until your navigator tells you it's glowing. So right here is where it started glowing. Um, this is just as fine. This is a great thing to have in your portfolio. It looks good. I mean, it looks good. Um, if you want the color, if you have to have the color, just desaturate it just a little bit. It should not be prominent. And the diagnose, diagnose, like the, sorry, why don't I know how to use that word right now? Uh, the, the diagnostic, the, the, the diagnosis, <laughs> the diagnosis is that your background was working way more than the character was. Your, bra your background was just all up in our faces. Okay, so you see how big the legs were. It's like you went into Portrait Studio, you grabbed all of this, oops, alt and then drag, alt drag, 
Alt drag. Alt drag. And you just did this. Oops. Oops. Oh, I did it wrong. Abu, how do I do this again? I forgot how. Well, it's like you went and did uh, did this. All right, that's how that's how it feels to me. That's how it looks. Really, really exaggerated leg leg size. Um, the only time you need to exaggerate leg size for a female is in perspective. Um, you don't really exaggerate leg size um, like that in a character that isn't in extreme perspective. There's never a point where any female character you ever draw requires um, a body, an upper body, that is significantly smaller than a lower body. That is the opposite of what a female, I mean, an, a lower body that is significantly larger uh, than the upper body. That's just, you're throwing off everything. There is a weight distribution, the hips carry all the weight, but it doesn't mean legs are big. It just, mean hip, it just means hips are wide, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, she, her arm is still very, very muscular to me. Sometimes I like doing this to find whether or not things are too big. Yeah, the arms are really, really rounded. Um, so I might just, this is, this is manual painting. This isn't something that, uh, is, you can do with liquify. The legs being bent is also shrinking the legs, but that's fine as long as you somehow find a way to, I think it's the, it's this. Lower the neck a little bit. I think that might help us as well. We kind of lengthened her too much. <clears throat> um, so flatten. <sighs> and then we have this piece. Okay. So this is outside of Portrait Studio. I've been considering bringing in skin tones in Portrait Studio, but uh, we're still perfecting the uh, subsurface scattering. But you see what happens when I grayscale the background? So when you choose a background color, this also happened in the previous painting, um, you are, the background color tricks you into thinking your saturation is normal. Write that down. Um, that means that if, you're, if your background is a color that is similar to the wash on the face, it won't tell you whether or not you have too much of that color. It'll hide the fact that you have too much of that color which is what washes are great for, matching colors. But if this is a study and you're studying skin tone and the first rule of skin tone is, um, let's not talk about skin tone, <laughs> I'm joking, I had to do it. The first rule of skin tone is um, to uh, be subtle, to have subtlety, uh, to be as desaturated as possible. And you can't do that with a color wash that hides from you the fact that you're oversaturated. So skin tone should pretty much be here, and hear me out, it looks very gray. But we're going to shift over into yellows as well. So you've got two major skin tones happening here, so I'm going to have to correct one. Yes, you're supposed to use purple uh, in shadows, but it's not the lower half of the face changes complexion. It's not a, an olive skin tone up here and a very pale pink skin tone down here. It's not like that you still have a lot of those pinks um, but they're just very very subtle and it's just the absence of, of yellow um, and then we have oops no 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 we have a darkening going on and we're shifting again I just keep adjusting and shifting back into yellows desaturating but saturating as well I think this is a great place to be for your skin tones. Your values were way too bright. And then we're jumping into liquify. Whoopsie. Filter or liquify. <clears throat> we're jumping into liquify here. I'm so sorry, my voice is gone. And we're just decreasing the outer, the inner corner of the eye all the way down. And then there's the fact that the lower part of the face is really, really uh, dark. And that's made muddy colors happen, which is why I think you settled for saturation. So we have... Just 
just like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring in some really basic bounce light here just to lighten this area down and then lighten the background. I think actually before this I'm going to lighten the background. <clears throat> All this white is happening on the face for a reason and that's because the background is uh, also part of this environment that's bright. And then I'm just going to do this and you see all of these are me undoing what you did it's not me adding to what you did I'm not adding as honestly you guys fair warning if you find a channel that just keeps adding to mistakes like this they just keep adding they add like more dodge tool or they add more uh, color effects on their eyes and they add like weird sci-fi paint around the face they're doing it wrong when you're trying to manage a student's ability to understand transferring from grayscale to color the first lesson of the day is subtlety be subtle a professional knows when to be subtle with their colors because colors scream compared to grayscale even the slightest shift away from grayscale is saturation and um, usually students have the mistake of thinking saturation is just exaggerated color no saturation is color write that back to me Anything that doesn't have enough light does not have enough color. Um, and anything that has enough light has enough saturation, therefore has color. So saturation is color, and I think that's the diagnosis today, is that you have um, a misconception of what saturation is. I don't think you know what a purple is. I know that sounds rude to say, but really, I've done color tests on my students. When I tell them, draw me, you know, give me a purple, they give me a, like a pink color. Or I tell them, give me a yellow. They give me a, uh, like a really, really desaturated um, or oversaturated, unusual neon yellow or like an orange. You need to know what a color really is. What a color is 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 uh, <laughs> what a color is is the the actual primary identity in its best light source situation. So the, the colors are best in the light that feeds them the best. So a yellow does not look good dark. So we almost never have enough color for yellow, um, and we never have enough saturation for yellow, sorry, for it to get a pure yellow. But there is so much yellow in the skin, but we do not have enough yellow pigment in our skin tone. So that's why I say subtlety. When you're transferring from grayscale to color in respect to skin, and we have lots of yellows, you just do not saturate. Just move slightly. And now this nice, gentle, pretty base is ready for some blush to be added to select areas so I'm just gonna add it in a new layer you don't necessarily need to add it with a with a color layer so I'm on color mode but it's not working because it's a different layer what all you need to do is just choose the area that you're going to be adding the value in the new color in so I want to add some red to the lips to the top lip this is already dark enough I just have to change it to a cooler value and this value will be the same darkness level, so I'm not messing around with my shades. That's one way to add in color, just like that. Not too dark for the lower lip, so again, it's up here all the way. I'm just going to saturate on this line to make sure I don't go too dark. And there we go, a little bit. Actually, your shadow here is way too um, green and stuff. Way too dark as well. That's why you're getting some muddy colors around the nose. But again, there's blush around the nose. Shift down, move up. Oops. Shift down, move to the side. Get that pink. We're adding it in. You can use color mode, that's fine too. I'm also going to go right here into the eyes, into the most desaturated area of the eyes. See how pink it is and stuff? Well, any shift away from red looks green. Look, we're in orange, but it looks green. We're not even in green yet, but look how green it looks compared. So anything that is not red is green because those two hate each other. 
their arch enemies. And I'm just bringing that gentle green, and that's just because we've got the yellow of the skin being very see-through, and all the purple underneath, and the blue just merges into a green. There are all these other indicators, though, of having dewy skin, which is, the nose is way too bright, man. You, you, you just, you were flaring on all cylinders, I think. You made it super saturated, over contrasted. I think your values were still really bad. You were, they were in a really weak spot and you went into color. And because of that, I think you fell off a great deal. But nothing is better than making a mistake and knowing exactly what you did so you never do it again. Um, I think that's the, the people who have problems with critiques, problems with my channel, are people that haven't realized that yet. Hey, why are you defined by the current mistakes you're making or the current mistakes your portfolio is making? Uh, some students have realized this and have just moved past it, just got over it. Get over the fact that you make mistakes. You always will. Um, but I don't think these people have actually you know, processed the fact that they're making mistakes. But to identify the mistake is to get over it, to be, to be no longer defined by it. And I think that's the beauty of being part of a community that critiques you, is they'll always 100% help you to being your best possible version. So yeah, I'm very, you know, not proud of the mistakes the student make because I, I'm sad that they're, they're, you know, they're not enough resources out there um, kind of just revealing to you that subtlety is the key to skin tones. It's like the biggest uh, thing people search for, how to paint skin tones, and the biggest lesson is subtlety, be subtle. Uh, but at the same time, I'm very proud of you for trying it so that you can identify where your mistakes are. You were, you were not the same artist you were before you started this critique and before you painted this. You're definitely eons already ahead of where you were before, just from this basic lesson. Everything stretches out of this lesson. When you're painting a red coat, almost always you use this primary crayon red, which is so unusual and does not belong to its light environment. Use a red that is dictated by the amount of light available and the amount, the kind of red it is, cool or warm, and then you'll be able to match colors in an environment and an illustration. Red does not exist at nighttime. It requires a lot of um, yellow and light source to reveal the orange in it. Uh, but, uh, but some of the purple is still there. So red coats at night look like they are like purple coats or a red dress or something like that. This shadow here, it needs to be extended into the temple, and then I'll do a quick before and after for you. <clears throat> I really don't know where my channel is headed to, um, considering all these obstacles that the living in the United States has, has laid in my way. Um, I, I don't know how to deal with uh, living here anymore, and it's uh, very likely almost 100% sure I'm going to be leaving the United States very soon. And um, I'm just probably going to start 2018 packing and boxing stuff and moving and it probably will be a massive break. Um, you know, between me, uh, between our last class on the 21st, uh, which is what, when the, uh, the stuff is due. I don't know if it's going to be due on the 19th or 21st, the, the holiday challenge or both, but between here and here, uh, or not here, or even into February, um, there might be a massive break considering what I decide to do. It's a very big decision which country I go to. It's a very big decision um, when I go and what I'm taking with me and uh, whether or not I'm skipping this tax season. I don't care if it's not representing my business and making immigration harder. I honestly don't know where to go. It has to be somewhere that speaks English and is not having a terrible political climate like the UK. And that's just Canada and that's just a hop, skip, and away. A hop, skip, and a jump away, sorry, <laughs> um, from me right now. A little bit of shadow here. I like to be very transparent with you guys, and I'm always expressing and complaining to you guys. You guys are like family. It's It's been like this since I, I first critiqued, um, I don't know if I've ever said this, but this channel was my getaway from a really, really, really bad time in my life. Um, a time so bad that the person responsible for it is on parole and is an, uh, you know a, a person who has been to jail because of what they did. And I don't even know if I'm going to keep this in the final version, but 
you guys, when I started teaching you guys, that's when I started, got a getaway, and I had just finished school, I uh, finished college for English, and I lived in Toronto, and I was like, I really want to teach, but I don't want to teach English anymore, I want to teach art, and I miss art. And I just started doing it, and here I am. I know it's not a lot of subscribers, but it's a lot of people if you think of it in people and think of it in students and not just stupid YouTube digits. And so when someone threatens, and you guys saw how I was with those marketing agencies that just kept hounding me. When someone threatens my channel, they threaten, like, my baby. And I am I will relocate just so I can make it every Tuesday and Thursday for you guys. This channel has opened all the doors for me. I'm just smudging here a little bit. And nothing will threaten it. Not Trump, not not anybody. Not this disgusting system that it's become, not and it's Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can if I keep talking I'm probably gonna cry. But I've been through a lot and I'm not I don't feel like a twenty seven year old, I feel like a forty year old. And um I just thought it was time to rest, you know, it was time to retire and just work, you know, it's like a retire from struggle and just work and be, just be on this big boat ride until we all die and the Day of Judgment pops up or something. But there's all these people who are trying to stop the peace and not let people who have just tiny little businesses just be at peace and just do their thing. Because when you've touched people's lives, you can't just ditch people. I'm just desaturating one more time for the subtlety to make 100% sure I have all the subtlety. And now let's take a look at the before and after. Before. After. It looked like they were right beside a... Like the after is making my piece look like grayscale, but my piece has like solid saturation in it. Look at this. We're on the good side. We're on like the, the, the sweet spot right here. We have a really great saturation. Just enough. Just on the outskirts. For a pale person. This is a pale person. This is not olive complexion. Olive complexion is darker and more saturated and more yellow. Olive complexion does a little bit of this. Uh, minus the background and the greens. But this is very, very pale person. Okay. So if you wanted to saturate just a little bit more, just the slightest little window that you're allowed. And even then, it still looks really, really super grayscale. And if you want to saturate, you saturate on areas that naturally come pigmented. So you saturate um, the lips, the eyes, the eye color. That stuff you can really have fun with. Go crazy. Over here. The color of the pupil, of the, of the water eye, like the water line, sorry, of the eye is super saturated. It's like they're wearing pink eyeliner on the waterline. I've said this before, I've always imagined myself living in the UK as a kid. I used to dream about it because my hero was Tolkien. Um, and, uh, you know, I love Shakespeare. That's why I went into English. It was just always so magical and mystical for me. I remember the first time I heard Hamlet and saw Hamlet in a play. And I just couldn't believe that, you know, this, this there's a whole country out there with talks like this. <laughs> I just wanted to live there. Um, I wanted all the sights. I wanted to be close to all that stuff. I, I just, there's all these books that change me from Great Expectations to, to, to Lord of the Rings. And I just, um, I've always imagined myself living there. But seeing as how, um, you know, they have very little tolerance now for people of my skin complexion. So I, I don't know anymore really where to go. Okay, so this is like the apocalypse. So I'm just adding just the slightest little drop in value around the eyes, just so it doesn't look like too much of a baby. And then I'm going to stretchy stretch. Actually, no, it's stretched out the eyes. I probably will just do this stretch along here. And then the stretch along here. I love the United States before. I loved it. I loved all its values. I loved how good it was for people starting home businesses and, you know, just the freedom of it all. How many groups there are and how big it is and how much, so much, like, just, just geographical variety, that, that alone. 
See how it has a bit of a baby face. But now seeing as it's, it's pretty much hijacked and it's held hostage by really, really bad people. And it's pushing all the people that ever made it what it was away. And I'd take myself and take my work and pay the taxes. I'd rather pay the taxes of another country in Europe um, than pay the taxes that, that uh, pay for that orange bastard's KFC dinner every night. <clears throat> so um, that's, uh, that's <laughs> we have that. I think there's too much red around the eyes as well, making her look very bloodshot. So I'm just going to get a color layer and... Um, just throw it on the eyes of a grayscale. Oh, whoopsie. I'm just grayscaling the white of the eyes just a little bit so they don't read as bloodshot. And one more time. <clears throat> Before, after. Just keep hustling. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Daniel, I just changed them. It's the back for president. <laughs> We're always here for you. So even if you go delusional, we'll be here to support you all the way. What do you mean delusional? I did teach English, yes. I can't stay because the climate has become very, very uh, volatile for people who have small businesses and are online based. Uh, all of the effects that will happen when net neutrality is taken away, if it is, God forbid, um, will affect me completely and directly. Um, Google Hangouts, the bandwidth for Google Hangouts, the bandwidth for Discord, um, it, all of those disgusting packages they're planning will limit people's ability to sign in to my classes or sign in or join live streams on a decent bad bandwidth, especially if I'm streaming at 1080p. <clears throat> no one is, what are you going to expect everyone to pay for 1080p quality videos um, and uh, be able to follow the amount of, of uh, bitrate that I'm streaming in? They're going to be capping all of that. Um, and that's how it's going to affect me. As for other things that affect me, the healthcare affects me completely. The healthcare here is a joke, and I am um, I uh, I'm a very sick person, and I need the healthcare. And they're they're trying to squeeze every last penny out of you. Have I ever thought teaching uh, at a school? Um, I don't like working for administrations and and design uh, curriculums designed outside of what I feel like is appropriate for a student. I like to work with small groups um, professionally and for the public class I like to work with large groups um, like this. So if I'm only teaching in this way right now it's not enough because these are very general brush strokes that I'm adding to one person in general but when I teach professionally meaning one-on-one -on -one, I like it to be one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I consider professional tutoring. Um, every person is so different. For you to run classes that have 20 students each it's just like a 20 student stream for me. It's very low quality in the sense that I don't get to interact with each one personally and find their issues. So I don't think I'd ever be able to go and deal with that. I'd, I'd be hosting like four hour lectures for a group of 100 people or, or like 20 to 100. And um, I don't want to be bossed around. <clears throat> I'm making more money now than I would have ever made working at a an art school or atelier. Proud to say, very proud to say. Um, so are there any other questions? Oh, I'll take you with me. I'll take you with me, GM. <laughs> Everything is wrong with America. You should not put your name on the post you upload to critique. Sorry to interrupt. I'm nervous. No, 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 please put your name. It's okay. They just, they just forget to put their name because they upload it on their profile and their profile already has their name. Um... You have the experience of a 70-year-old. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I don't think I'm a revolutionary, though. I think I'd rather be a revolutionary if I really did gear up like I wanted to and join all those women who were sniping ISIS, which is something I seriously considered back in 2014 and 2013. I was like, I'm done. I'm buying my ticket. I'm going to Iraq, and I'm shooting up those motherfuckers. <laughs> I would have been a revolutionary. Imagine me, but with a kill count, an ISIS kill count. <sighs> That's my dream. Anyway, um, I've discovered this channel not long ago, and I've learned in this uh, four months more than I learned in a year of academia. 
uh, thank you. I want you to choose to do and where you decide to go. What you choose to do and where you decide to go, I'll support you. You guys are so sweet. Uh, no, I'm not saying I'm so rich. I'm saying that what there's paid, what they're paying students in the University of Toronto, uh, teachers' assistants, and art schools is poverty line. They're making less than like eighteen thousand a year. I'm not saying I'm rich. I'm saying I'm not poverty line. Thank God, shukrulillah. <clears throat> one of me is to wreck in real life face to face at least once in my life <laughs> oh my god that's so sweet I want to see the face of my savior um, my art mama my little baby artist that I am Oh, I'm so grateful for you thank you thank you for teaching us I have learned so much so far you're very welcome I'm Iraqi too and I haven't been here in six years I seriously considered that too yeah me too I haven't been there in years and years so um any more questions art related, I'll answer those as well. So now for this, this is very, very easy. We just slidey slide, just like that. Um, as for how dark it is, the beautiful thing about stormy scenes is they are desaturated, but they're not dark, um, meaning they don't have nighttime black values. Look at how dark you went. This is only if it was nighttime or there was a dark, dark room. There's so much light reflecting through all these little snowdrops that you have almost no black. You have just these um, values everywhere that are uh, bounced and moved around. So what I'm doing is I'm using the wash color as well as the lighten color mode. And I'm throwing it over everything. What I will go, this is just the first wash, what I will do is go back and find where we're having all of those dark spots and then just bring them back. I'm also going to get a color layer and get rid of that yellow, which is not possible. That sunshine, though it is coming through, imagine getting a yellow flashlight and shining it through a blue um, uh, rice paper. Um, it, will, it will shine through it in value for sure. It'll be dimmed ever so slightly. Uh, imagine multiple layers of rice paper and you're shining a uh, basically like wax paper and you're shining a flashlight a yellow flashlight through will that yellow flashlight stay yellow on the other side of that pile of uh, rice paper no that's what this rice paper is every thin little sheet of snow has stopped the yellow from coming through we need the yellow of the sun to show the yellow of the skin that's it and so this is not possible. So what I'm doing here is just like a general fix. And then I will go back and bring back all of those dark spots. So we're starting with the eyebrows, which I will have to recolor correct. The eyes. And if it's some sort of, it seems like a comic book illustration, um, like a close-up of this girl's face and they did wonderful but I feel like you lost anything that you accomplished around the eyes to that extremely dark shadow which is again a cast shadow is this cast shadow capable in overcast obviously the answer is no by the way I've <laughs> I phrased it <laughs> but uh, it's not so what we have to do again is just make sure that our cast shadows are more soft and find a little socket. Zoom back out. Find a little nostril. See how dark the cast shadow is? This is how dark we're going to stay. And then you've just got this super, like, super difference between the, sh the light and the shadowed areas. And that's just too much. Okay, darken only darkens the areas that are actually um, under that value so we have to make sure that we're getting more gradients in this in this overcast scene it's just the biggest problem of relocation is being able to figure out my time zone for live live stream hours I can deal with students in fact the more east I go the easier it will be, will be, it will be for me because I have a lot of European students um, uh, I guess they're just, uh, you know, I don't know why. I'm just really popular in Europe <laughs> compared to the U.S. Um, so I, I, you know, that would be easier for me time zone difference wise. I wouldn't be so distant from them. Uh, my 3 o'clock wouldn't be there 8 o'clock. And GMT uh, 0 would be way better <laughs> than GMT negative 5. 
Um, so that's that's easier for me. But as for my, you know, like Pacific students who are from San Diego, which I have quite a bit of, like, like uh, California or Washington uh, or Mountain Time, um, which is not that big a difference for me now, but it'll be almost eight hour difference if I go to the UK. That's something I'm worried about. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm recreating this exact scene, but I'm using cooler values and I'm leaving the midtones populated. There are more, more midtones and overcast. Write that back to me. I'm also getting rid of some of these um, uh, cast shadows that are a bit too sharp. So it's going to be a lot of thinking. I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking. Um, I really don't need to be doing anything, any, any thinking. I need to be resting. Uh, but uh, my holidays are coming up, and I'm just going to be doing a lot of thinking. Color. And then the white in the eye is really, really important. Have you ever stood outside in a snowstorm that was kind of mid-afternoon? By the way, we're expecting one here uh, along Lake Erie. It's like a massive storm. I cannot wait. Um, and uh, just looked at someone. They don't have any shadows. There's no shadows on their face. It's just this really annoyingly unflattering light that you would never take a picture in. <clears throat> because it's just so much exposure. So this looks a lot more believable for the scene. The lips are way, 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 way too sharp. I mean, the way you drew it was you, you really, you know, softened the cheekbones. But when you got to the lips, you sharpened them as if they were... The nose was less sharp than the lips. As if they were an edge. And it's just like a cliff that suddenly all the values drop off of. Lips are flesh. Please smudge them. Please blend them. Going to Canada would be the easiest option, but for like three months I'd have to live with my parents. <laughs> I'm not fucking doing that. I paid with my life to get the fuck out of my parents' house. I am not. I love my mom, but I would never <laughs> live back with her. I mean, I'm sure you guys understand anyone my age. It's a very big decision coming up. And I just thought I'd vent about it. All right, just a little bit of shadow here. And then what you can do is just bring back all the contrast. So you can bring back the contrast piece by piece, starting with anything dewy. So we've got blocking brush. Oops, no, the blocking brush needs to be more purple. So it's a little bit more white. All right, so. This is contrast. After we've established some great, the hairline is like, as, as it's, it's playing, what's that game when you're trying to crawl under a stick? What's that game, mumbo? Jumbo? Limbo? It's playing limbo. She's tilting her head down, but her, uh, her forehead is still low. Your forehead gets low when you're tilting your head up away. Limbo. There we go. Oh no, what'd you do, Daniel? <laughs> Daniel got modded. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> Limbo, yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm just adding some darkness for the lips. I'm going to smudge this away. I'm going to raise the hairline and that'll be that for today. Okay, there will be more shadows that I'll bring back in the previous. Um, the background is always lighter than the character, so right now the character is just a little bit too light. That's okay, because we were planning and mapping. Her hairline should be up here. Her head should be less square, unless she's a jar head or some kind of military character, which is okay if you want to make their head a little bit more squared. But for a delicate female uh, love interest in a, in a show or, or a movie or something, Go for typical female 
features. So how do I do this? I before, after, and then just select away at the character. Actually, I'll just select some of the shadowed areas. Areas under the neck. Areas here casting shadows. They do. There are cast shadows, but what are they if you were to define those cast shadows? They are extremely soft. Soft, soft shadows. So I'll, I'll erase first because I want some of your detail. And then I will throw my color on top darker around the neck pocket and just like this and then deselect get her nice actually not deselect oops get our nice big brush nice and cool and dark okay maybe on multiply this is a great place and then we have the hair which needs to be darkened Got burn on shadows, sure. Can darken the hair. So we'll see what we're doing. We're darkening along pigmentation, along shadows. And then we've got the lower half of the face, which is darker always. So we're going to use some of that along with. And this feels like more like, I know, I'm looking at a girl who's standing outside in a storm. It's not so much a extremely stormy, but also sunny scene, which is not possible. Okay. And then we've got these outer areas here, which we need a little bit more shadow in. The outsides of her dress. Again, I'm just going to color correct. A little bit more around here since you're going for that super shadowed face. Kind of like a little bit daunting or foreboding. And then I would adjust the levels. Just a bit, just to raise them up, and then just bring shadows down a step. <clears throat> and then get my brush tool on soft brush before I smudge, actually, and then just um, just carry some of that shadow in and around her ears. It'd be really weird if she had this super perfect hairline. Hair doesn't do that. And um. Might darken the lips a little bit because I think you went for a dark lip. And then I would frame. So I would frame like this. Since she's so, uh, again, very stern, I would frame like that. And I would reposition her to be more, oops, to be more this way. Okay, and you can do whatever you want with the hair. The hair is still very um, light. You can go ahead and darken it. It's pigment, so that means you can darken it. Let me show you. Uh, God help me, 50. All right, that's good enough. So you can darken it all the way down to this. That's fine, as long as you keep her face the way it is. Do not darken hair with skin. Write that back to me. Because hair is pigment. Hair darkens in a whole other way and fashion than skin does. And I think this reads more as, I'm, I'm even gonna shift it over from purple into, oops, I'm still in this. From purple into blue, because then it'll look more stormy. Take a look at that. And then we can bring in those believable values over here highlight just making the face look very three-dimensional climbing ever so slightly 
and I'll just erase away in a sec. Okay, so never darken exactly hair with skin. They are completely different values from each other. Okay, so just a little bit more highlight. Don't want her to look too chunky. Because her face is probably um, wet with snow or rain. And you can just keep going. You can make her way more dark than uh, the background. I wish I had PSDs. You know, I wish I used to ask for them, but... I never asked for them early on because I was just like, oh, I'll just suck it up and just learn how to do <laughs> lasso. But I got to tell you, man, sometimes lasso is a little, especially if you got little raindrops everywhere. Okay, so select inverse. Either you, oops, either you darken her a little bit darker, or lighten the background. So you can do something like that, and then desaturate just in case it overcolored, or you can just try both. And I think that works better to work as a stormy scene. Can also be adding in some smoke rising from the storm or something like that or some steam that might help I think this is a lot more moody and emo which is I think what we're going for whenever we paint a character in a stormy scene like this look at how nice everything is now it's balanced you can carry it through all of these values here it is at zero which is still too purple for my taste I think the background is a completely different color than the skin tones. So see that? Now we have red in the back background but green on the face. I think it's just her face that needs to be a little bit more blue. Um, so color adjustment all the way down. That might help. Now you have more of the character visible. Her face isn't hidden in this unusually dark uh, environment. She's a little bit, makes a little bit more sense. What is she, is she like in a rainy scene, but it's fall sunlight shining through? It doesn't make any sense. You can't have warm skin if you have a, if you have a, like a scene like that. Um, she's either outside or she's in, you know, in, in the storm and her face, her color is gone in her face. Also, I have to change her color even more and desaturate it, me as the painter, because her look at her expression. She's pissed off. She's like about to just, um, like some stuff from Stranger Things and bleed out of her nose and stuff like that. She's about to destroy someone. Um, Waterline is a little bit forced. You might want to just soften it up a little bit. It's gradual. Hair doesn't just grow like that side by side militarily it kind of just graduates into the thicker parts of the hair and then you can just throw some pieces of hair from the scalp where you can see part of the scalp through the hairline and stuff like that okay so any questions is Rebecca's second coming for artists <laughs> Fucking 11 over here, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave the hairline alone because I did not complete that job and I don't want to ruin the paint over. Uh, you are loved by your community and your time is treasured, so please don't digest. <laughs> cry face, cry face. I love you guys so much. I don't think I can ditch you, but I would have to leave for a while to figure out my location and my situation. I am internet dependent. And if they're threatening the internet of my viewers and myself, um, then I have to leave. 
and that's going to be a while. Changing to a new country, figuring out where you're going to go is a lot of work. You can't just cross the border and not come back out when it comes to Canada. There's so much paperwork, so much immigration. I'm Canadian, but Abu isn't. <clears throat> I'm almost as moist as that scene. <laughs> Oh, Tiger, you're so sweet. You're really not a big fan. Um, uh, you have to... Uh, uh, did you try the website? <laughs> um, uh, so the color environment affects the skin color. Why not then for a second critique face? Um, because that was a study. That wasn't an environment. See art. That was a study. And the study made them think these were the normal skin tones, which they were not. So you have a background that's of a certain color. This is what I was explaining. Background that is purple, and you're choosing colors that matches the background. But you're going to have to paint skin tone again in another scene somewhere around your lifetime. And you're going to base them off that how that purple affected your skin tones. This is all about whether or not you're, you're storing the right information. This is all about... Um, visual library. This is all about how you memorize and how you perform outside of reference. Never study skin against a color. Skin comes in all kinds of ways and you have to study it just in itself. So leave it against a really, really uh, grayscale background. Um, so you can uh, adjust the skin and think only of skin. That's why. See art. <clears throat> I saw the question earlier and I just really want it answered. How does your approach change between darkening skin versus darkening hair? I darken hair separately. If I'm dealing with a cool skin tone that is tanned um, a little bit, then I choose a very grayscale tan brown. Um, it's not grayscale, but it's very, really desaturated brown. I have to choose it. So basically, cool hair is for cool skin. Warm hair is for warm skin. Um, and then dark hair can be on a super pale face. They're not affected by each other. You can have super black hair on a super white face, um, and that's just fine. Okay, that's really how I go about it. I don't worry so much about them being the same value, but I do worry about them being the same temperature. Match hair temperature, you don't have to match hair value with skin. So match hair and skin temperature, <laughs> you don't have to match uh, hair and skin value. Write that back. Thank you very much. I'm not sure, so sure about being inspiring, but anything to get you guys drawn, right? Is this a wreck dying? I literally just got here. No, not yet. <laughs> Thirsty for knowledge. Uh, so, you look forward to the resurrection of this wreck. <laughs> You'll make it wherever you decide to go. Thank you so much. I'm really, I really am scared. Um, your paint over surprised me every time. You're an amazing artist and best teacher I've ever had. Thank you very much. <clears throat> How does Isterak know so much, I wonder? Well, when I was born, my mother was told um, to take me, as soon as I was born, to the top of a mountain, and there a shaman... Uh, tied a little blanket around my brain and that blanket was the lost sleeve of uh, uh, this was part of the sleeve of the shirt of, um, of that prophet that knew so much what's his name David David's father anyway Solomon yeah and then because they tied the sleeve of Solomon around <laughs> my head all this knowledge was poured in and uh, that's how I became the genius that I am today. I'm just joking. I don't know. I just, I, I, I was a weird kid. I focused on a lot of details. It, it has its downfalls as well. I, uh, I like to analyze. <laughs> um, hold on, I'll stop Mr. Rex teaching. Um, have you seen the actor who's going to play Mulan? No, I, th I think I did. As long as she's Asian, I don't really care. <clears throat> I'm no Lenny, but I take notes. Futuram, Hermes, Limbo Chant. 
Oh, you want to freeze into snow? That's so sweet. Snow is beauty beautiful. I would never leave this hemisphere. Wherever I go, end up, wherever I'm going to end up going, it's either in this hemisphere. I mean, in this hemisphere, and yeah, in this hemisphere, um, in this latitude or higher. I love snow. I, I would die without snow. I think. And under rendered lip is the best lip exactly. I'm so sorry about my late stream today. I had a terrible, terrible day. Um, I am sorry about all the bad news that I have, uh, but it is uh, someone out there is trying to uproot our life as Americans, of, of residents of the United States, and it's going to affect us. And some of us work for YouTube, and some of us uh, stream on YouTube. I don't work for YouTube. Fuck YouTube. But I, uh, I stream on YouTube, and I, um, and I try to reach people, and it's affecting me. So it's going to affect you, and. Uh, it just angers me a great deal. This class and the stream means the world to me. It is my world. Teaching is my world. And I love it. I love doing it. Very little people can say they love the crap out of their job. And I love mine. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to be transparent with you guys. I want to express everything to you guys. And tell you guys how I feel. And um, yeah. So I'm very sorry about my bad mood. And I'm very sorry about my rant earlier. Which I will not publish until the recording. And I will see you guys on Thursday. Please make sure that you do join the community uh, challenge as soon as possible if you're interested in it. Um, so where is it? Uh, community. Oh, what am I doing? I completely forgot my routine. To go to join the community, go to histerac.com and click on the little Google Plus icon on the top right of the website. And uh, read this because this is the announcement for the busy holiday fantasy town. I wanted to stream yesterday, but I was way too tired. I might stream tonight. Uh, just some thumbnail um, sketches of what I what I might, you know, how I interpret the busy holiday town. Make sure you read the rules, please. It took me time to write this for you guys. So please read it. Um, there's like these really important rules in there um, about how to interpret the Christmas season in your holiday town. I will see you guys on Thursday. Um, I love you guys very much. Bye.